The visual designs of the villains in comic book movies are pretty notorious for being... Uh, how do you put it nicely? Fucking garbage. How do you go from this to that? Hollywood has a habit of taking characters with great designs and turning up shit. It's pretty mind-boggling how often they manage to pull it off. Like really, how hard is it? With that said though, sometimes, believe it or not, Hollywood actually gets it right. Sometimes, they actually manage to come up with a good villain design. These are very rare occurrences, I know, but nevertheless, they do exist. In this video, I will list my top 10 personal favorite movie designs for comic book supervillains. Keep in mind, I'm not talking about comic book accuracy here. I'm talking about designs that look good. They can be comic book accurate, but they don't have to be. Anyway, feel free to list your own favorites down in the comments. Number 10. Mystique from the original X-Men trilogy. Sorry, J-Law. Mystique, the shape-shifting evil mutant, was played by model Rebecca Romaine in the first three X-Men movies. So in the comics, Mystique is a blue-skinned, red-haired lady wearing a white outfit. A great design. In the movies, they did her a bit differently, but still stayed pretty true to the comics. Instead of having smooth skin, she had weird, textured, almost kind of scaly skin like a reptile. Far more alien looking than in the comics. She also discarded the white outfit for nothing. Yep, in the original movies, Mystique runs around buck naked. Regardless of how you feel about that, it certainly makes for an interesting visual. A weird, naked blue lady. This design for the character perfectly blends sexy with creepy. The naked thing kinda makes sense too. I mean, she can create clothes out of thin air when she shapeshifts. So why would she bother with actual clothes? Of course, that doesn't quite explain why she doesn't create some kind of outfit for her default look. Who knows? Maybe she's a nudist. Number 9. The Penguin from Batman Returns. So we go from a sexy blue lady to a short, ugly man. Returns' penguin was of course played by the gorgeous Danny DeVito, almost unrecognizable in that hideous makeup. So as we've talked about a million times on this channel before, the look for Returns' Pengi is quite a departure from the comics. Instead of being a stylish, funny-looking gentleman, he's a grotesque freak. A pale-skinned, deformed monster with flippers for hands and long, stringy hair. With his main outfits, somewhat similar to his comic wardrobe, he still retains that sense of style, though. It's a very different penguin, yeah. But I think it perfectly achieved what it set out to do. That being a far more monstrous and deformed version of the character. At that, it excels. I mean, I don't think you can ask for a freakier looking pangy. Number 8. The Joker from The Dark Knight Heath Ledger's Joker is another Batman movie villain who looks quite different from his comic book counterpart. But again, like Pengi, it's a look that goes perfectly with the movie's portrayal of the character. The Dark Knight's Joker isn't comic book Joker after all. It's a grungier, dirtier, more nihilistic and realistic take. This look accommodates that to a T. With the stringy hair, the sloppy slapped on makeup, the sparkling teeth, and the filthy outfits of more muted colors. And of course, let's not forget that smile of his. Giving the Joker a Glasgow smile was at the same time a stroke of genius as it was obvious. This version of the Joker is definitely among the creepiest looking takes on a character. Just like Returns Pengi, it's certainly not a definitive visual design, but it's a great and very inspired alternative. Surprisingly so too, as Christopher Nolan isn't exactly known for inspired character designs. Number 7. Thanos from the MCU The MCU is, overall, not known for good villain designs, or good villain portrayals in general for that matter. The MCU villains look as generic as they're written. There are a few exceptions, of course, and one of the greatest is Thanos himself, the main villain, if you will, of the MCU. Yep, you heard it here first. Mr. Rogues is an MCU Thanos fanboy. Well, I wouldn't really go that far, but I do like MCU Thanos, and do think he is one of the best villains of that series. 
you certainly can't complain about his design anyway, because he looks pretty much like he does in the comics. A big purple alien dude with a giant chin and golden armor. You really couldn't ask for a better looking live action Thanos. They also managed to capture actor Josh Brolin's face very nicely within that Thanos face. Of course, since the character is made entirely out of CGI, he does look a bit like a cartoon. But that's how it always is with CGI characters, so what are you gonna do? Number 6. Catwoman from Batman Returns Another Batman villain, and from Returns again no less. What can I say, it's a great looking movie. So just like the two previous Bat Rogues, this particular movie take on Catwoman looks quite different from her comic counterpart. I mean, it's clearly the Catwoman costume Michelle Pfeiffer's wearing, but the details are very different. Again, it's all to match the movie's characterization of Catwoman. It's a costume she herself makes on the fly, hence the black leather patchwork look. It's also supposed to symbolize her character, her fragmented mind and her rebirth as this darker persona. She's a sort of Jekyll and Hyde and Frankenstein's monster rolled into one, and all of that is on display visually with this stitched together costume. It also makes for a very neat visual of course, especially against the backdrop of Burton's snow-covered Gotham City. Number 5. Black Manta from Aquaman Played by an actor whose name I'm not even going to try to pronounce, Black Manta here goes against most movie adaptations of comic book villains. He basically looks like he was ripped straight off the page. I guess he's a bit more armored up in the movie, but that's really a minor detail and frankly looks better than a pair of scuba tights anyway. They actually gave him his iconic helmet from the comics. Can you believe that? They easily could have done something stupid and made the helmet more realistic or whatever they call it. But no, they didn't. That is just amazing. The character Black Manta has such a cool and eye-catching design and it's so great the movie makers actually had sense enough to use it and not come up with a lame replacement. It's a shame Black Manta appears so little in the movie though, but hopefully that will be fixed in a sequel. And for the love of god, don't change his wardrobe. Number 4. Jigsaw from The Punisher Warzone I'm not really a big fan of this movie, and the main villain, Jigsaw, played by Dominic West, certainly could have been better. Still, with Jigsaw's poor track record even in the comics, I suppose he ain't too bad. One thing that's certainly not bad about him is his visual design. Just look at that beautiful mug. Now those are scars. Hell, he's even more scarred up than he usually is in the comics. Take that, Netflix show with your pussy scars. You couldn't ask for better jigsaw makeup effects than this. He's gotta be one of the most grotesque looking comic book movie villains of all time. I dig his outfits too. Just like in the comics, he switches between suave gangster suits to weird stuff. Yeah, a perfect looking live action jigsaw. If he ever appears in live action again, it's gonna be pretty tough to beat this. Maybe that's why the Netflix show didn't even bother. Number 3. Mysterio from Spider-Man Far From Home Before any images of Mysterio was revealed from this film, I was plenty worried he was going to look like crap. Because let's face it, Spider-Man movie villains have a track record of poor fashion sense. But with Mysterio, you just can't do that. His visual design is a big part of why people like him so much. But no one really expected Hollywood to understand that, of course. I was worried actor Jake Gyllenhaal would be against obscuring his face with a dome. And I was worried that they were going to try and Nolanize the Mysterio costume. Make it realistic. Well, as it turns out, none of that ended up being the case. And to my great surprise, Mysterio looks exactly like he does in the comics. I may not be 100% on board with the portrayal of the character, but no one can complain about its look. The dome, the costume, it's all ripped straight off the page. Pretty much anyway. Mysterio and Black Manta are definitely proof that you don't always have to reimagine the look of a comic book character. Sometimes, probably more often than Hollywood realizes, their original designs were just fine on the big screen as well. And most of the time, that's what people want anyway. 
Number 2, The Joker from Batman. Yeah, Joker shows up on its list again. What can I say? He's a good looking guy. Jack Nicholson's Joker here is of course a stark contrast to Heath Ledger's Dark Knight Joker. This is a very comic, accurate Joker. It's not exactly Joker from the comics, but very similar. The bright purple outfits, the wide brimmed hats, the white skin, the ruby red lips, the green hair. This is without a doubt the most Joker looking live action Joker, which is same much considering he's appeared in a lot of movies. For some reason they just don't want Joker to really look like the Joker in the movies. They're always trying to reinvent his look. It was fine for the Dark Knight but it's getting very tired now. Well at least we'll always have this perfectly designed Joker. It does have a unique aspect to it too, one we really haven't seen in anything else. A permanent grin. His face is frozen in a wide, grotesque smile. And it looks very disturbing. And now for my favorite designed comic book movie villain. Or should I say villains? Number 1. The Rogues Gallery from Dick Tracy. Probably an unexpected choice. Most people seem to have forgotten this movie even exists. And Dick Tracy villains isn't exactly something I usually talk about on this channel. However, when it comes to movie adaptations of comic villains, nothing beats the rogues gallery of 1990s Dick Tracy. Design-wise, that is. The rogues in the Tracy strips look very grotesque, disfigured and deformed in bizarre fashions. This movie captures those weird designs perfectly with its makeup effects. We've got the likes of flat top, prune face and lips manless ripped straight off the page. And that is very impressive considering just how bizarre the characters they're based on look. Then of course there's the main villain, Big Boy Caprice, played by Al Pacino. A character who looked normal in the strips, but here is a grotesque caricature. The movie makers even bothered to sprinkle in tiny cameos by numerous rogues. Like the brow and little face, all of them painstakingly designed to look like their comic counterparts. Of course the makeup effects isn't everything, because there's also the wardrobe. Colorful and gaudy gangster suits, just like the characters wore in old comics from the golden age. The entire movie uses this color scheme, including the sets, simplistic bright colors mimicking the primitive coloring techniques of the golden age. No other movie ever made looks more like a comic book than Dick Tracy. It might just be the greatest looking movie of all time. And there you have it, my top 10 favorite comic book villain movie designs. Tell me yours in the comments. Considering so many movie designs suck, I might do a top 10 worst designs in the future. It is more fun to whine about stuff than it is to praise stuff after all. Anyway, this is the last Mr. Rogues video of 2019. So, happy new years and see you in the 20s.